Hey, what's up guys? I'm Kevon Mayers and I'm a solutions architect at AWS. In this video, I'll be demoing how you can leverage AWS services and infrastructure as code to build a serverless full stack contact center intelligence web application. Some of the AWS services I'll talk about are AWS Amplify, Amazon Cognito, AWS Step Functions, and AWS AppSync, to name a few. For infrastructure as code, I'll be using Terraform. Now, if you're not familiar with Terraform, it's an open source infrastructure as code software tool that enables you to create, change, and improve your infrastructure. I'll start by going over the architecture at a high level and then dive right into the code. If you'd like to follow along, the GitHub repo is linked in the description. So yeah, let's hop right into it. So, you know, at a high level, you know, our, our key services are um, AWS Amplify, which is a service that makes it easier to build full stack web applications. Uh, and then step functions, which I mentioned for really orchestrating all of this. S3, uh, simple storage service for storage for, um, you know, our audio file uh, in this case, and also the uh, transcript output. And then DynamoDB, which is gonna be our database to actually store that metadata. Now, I mentioned a service, Amazon Transcribe, um, and that's really an ML-powered uh, service, uh, which is created to essentially take audio um, or audio that's in a video and convert uh, and create a transcript from that. And specifically, what I'm using is Amazon Transcribe Call Analytics to really give you more detailed insight into the transcription. So beyond just having the transcription, getting things like sentiment analysis um, with that turn-by-turn -turn, uh, transcript. So we'll be able to see a little bit of that. Now, as I mentioned, um, in the description, there's a GitHub repo where you can um, you know, clone this repo locally and follow along. Um, the main, you know, document you want to reference in this is this deployment dot uh, markdown file and this goes through everything right so it goes through the same high level architecture that i just talked about it talks about cloudscape which is the uh, react component library that i'm leveraging uh, to build that aws amplify uh, ui talks about the AWS services and so on and so forth. You know, there's a lot of information in there. So if you kind of want to uh, follow along and, you know, or do that at your own pace, uh, feel free to just, you know, look at the deployment instructions in the readme. But I already have this locally on my machine. And the two main folders you're going to be dealing with are these uh, TCA uh, sample amplify app uh, repo, uh, sorry, directory, and then also this Terraform deployment directory. So let's first start in this Terraform deployment directory, which I should already be in. And again, this isn't really going to be a video about Terraform. Um, if there is interest, then that's something I can make at a later date. But essentially, we have this main entry point of this main.tf file and uh, really the minimum uh, parameters that you need to actually get this deployed. Now to make this easier, uh, what I'm actually leveraging is a custom Terraform module that I wrote that deploys all the AWS services for you. Uh, but if you're interested, you know, the naming is pretty self-explanatory for the different services, uh, but feel free to take a look in those files and, you know, if you want to really understand what's happening under the hood, but we're using that module. And um, our main authentication for the application is Amazon Cognito. Uh, so what we have here are, you know, essentially uh, some parameters that you can provide uh, for we have uh, administrators and then we also have standard users. And really, this is just to show an example of how you could have, you know, like a business function type um, access control. So maybe administrators, you want to be able to do certain actions in your application. But, you know, standard users might not need to do those uh, specific actions. And I'll touch on that a little bit more later. So what I'll do is I'll change the email address for the email that I want to provide for uh, SNS. Okay. And then what I'll also do is edit the um, one of the administrators. So I'll just add myself and then I'll just put in sure admin and then default admin okay 
and then I'll delete this other block. Um, that's really just, you know, um, it, it's going to be a, it's a list of objects. So you could just add on any additional uh, administrator users that you wanted by simply, you know, just copying and pasting them down and changing the values. But for me, it's just going to be the one. Okay. Now, before we can actually deploy this Terraform, we first have to initialize it. So we're going to run the command Terraform init. Okay, and that was successful. So the next command we're gonna run is terraform plan. And what this command is really gonna do is to uh, essentially give you a view into what's going to actually be deployed by terraform. So you can use this a little bit for debugging, um, you know, but we'll run this and see what is actually gonna be deployed by terraform. And I'll just expand this a little bit so we can see uh, just a little bit easier. Okay, so you can see that 89 resources are going to be created. Um, you can see there are some outputs just for ease of access of uh, some specific values you might need to use. And you can kind of see the format that they have, right? You know, so all the green pluses are resources that are going to be created. So all that looks good to me. So I'm going to run uh, Terraform apply to actually to apply this configuration. And just, you know, as a note, when you run Terraform apply, it actually is running a Terraform plan also. Uh, but I like to just plan first before I do the apply. Uh, but you can see now that I've done the apply before it actually performs the actions, it's going to ask you to type in yes if you want the, uh, it to go ahead and do that. So I'll enter yes. And now it's actually going to start deploying these resources. So we'll go ahead and wait for these to get uh, deployed and then we'll hop into the AWS console. All right, so the Terraform has uh, successfully uh, applied. So all those resources are now provisioned into my AWS account. Um, just to note, uh, I forgot to mention that to run this, you actually need to be authenticated into a specific AWS account. So you can use, uh, you know, an access key ID and secret access key and a yeah, specific AWS profile to do that. Uh, what I'm using is an IAM role. Um, but if, if you run into any issues about that, you know, feel free to drop a comment down below. But essentially, you need uh, to be authenticated into your specific AWS account to run this. So let's hop over into uh, the console and see what we have here. So if we look and let's check for Cognito, right? So we have the specific, uh, we have our user pool that should be created here. Yeah, so we have TCA user pool. And just as a note, uh, everything in the module for the most part that's deployed is gonna start with TCA just for ease of finding it. Uh, but you can see here we have two users that are created and uh, we have the admin and then also the default and you can see for the groups we have our admin group and then also the standard group and if you look at admin it has its own specific im role and specific permissions and then similar with standard uh, it's going to have its own specific permissions too so really this is that role-based access control so users that are in the admin user uh, pool group will be able to have different permissions than users that are in the standard user pool group. All right. And then we can also check uh, app sync because, you know, all this information is going to be stored in DynamoDB uh, as it was shown in the step function, but we're going to be accessing that with this GraphQL API. And you can see here TCA GraphQL API. So like I mentioned, Similarly, starting with TCA, so you know it was deployed uh, related to this. And the authentication mode is Amazon Cognito user pools. So essentially, that user, uh, you know, that we created, the admin user or standard user, uh, that's what we would be able to use to actually use this API. So later, when we actually log into the Amplify application, uh, we'll actually be able to query the information because we're using this authentication mode. Okay, so let's hop back in and actually get the Amplify side of things up and running. So if we go back into this and I'll go ahead and open a new terminal and then let's go into uh, the sample Amplify application. Okay, so let's go into there. 
All right, so once you're in the sample amplify application uh, directory, the first thing you're going to need to do is npm uh, install uh, to install the dependencies. Uh, and then the next thing you're going to need to run is npm run dev to start the dev server. And you can see that that was launched here, so we can open that up. Okay, cool. So you can see here we're brought to, if you have ever used Cognito, essentially just a standard uh, Cognito login page. So we're going to enter the email address that I provided for the administrator. And uh, you should have also been sent a temporary one-time passcode uh, to your email address that you provided. So I'm going to go ahead and type in mine. I believe that's the correct one. All right, and then you're going to be prompted to change your password. Okay and click change password. All right, so now you are successfully logged into your AWS uh, Amplify application. Uh, but essentially, we're gonna have this page for TCA jobs, which is gonna be a list of all of our transcribe call analytics jobs that were completed successfully. And then we also have this data uploader, uh, which is really just a sample of, you know, you being able to drop in uh, some specific files uh, and test this out. So if you look in, and we'll go back to VS Code, in resources, there's actually some sample media. Um, so you can use this media and drop it in uh, to the application and actually test this out. So that's what I'm go gonna go ahead and do is add a file. And then I'm going to grab something from sample media and upload this. Okay, that upload was successfully uploaded. And we can see that file was successfully uploaded from our AWS Amplify app into uh, this landing bucket. So let's go and look and see if our step function actually was triggered to run. Okay, and you can see for our state machines, we do have one state machine, TCA state machine, and one is running. So if we click on running, then we'll actually be able to see the execution. So we have one execution that's running and we can see the time that it started. So we'll click on this and we'll be able to actually see what's happening, right? So uh, as a recap, you know, it's uh, actually just completed, <laughs> but uh, essentially it would wait 20 seconds to get the uh, job status. And then if it's marked as completed, it would continue on, which it did. Copied it to the app storage for the Amplify app. Um, and then essentially uh, did some, you know, preparation, cleaned it up and wrote it to DynamoDB. We'll hop back over to Amplify, click on TCA jobs. And we do have the same information in the application. So it is successfully grabbing this uh, from DynamoDB. And remember, what's actually happening to allow this, uh, or, or what's actually doing that, is our API, uh, this GraphQL API. For the API, you can see our data source is this TCA output table. So that's what's actually, you know, uh, with a GraphQL resolver is actually fetching that information from the database uh, through this API. And then we're using this API in the code. Um, and it's actually presenting that here. Uh, and if you want to just test something out again, you could, you know, add another file and select, you know, one of the other sample audio files and upload and then be able to follow along the process again. So that concludes the demo. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You've successfully deployed a serverless full stack contact center intelligence uh, web application. You have your authentication, you have your database that's storing your call metadata, and you're querying that data with your GraphQL API and presenting it in a meaningful way in your front end. If you found this video helpful, then feel free to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you like more videos like this in the future. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, have a good rest of the day. See you.